obligate God to do our bids and our, our wants. But we can ask God, and he will guide us. He's promised to guide us if we only ask. Amen? Amen. So tonight, uh, my message is, um, uh, what is your strategy? Think about it, because you know what? The devil has a strategy against you. He's got a plan that he knows will work on you. And every one of us has a different uh, thing that he can get you on. What would get me might not get him. And what would get him might not get me. You know, and that old devil, he knows, that old rascal, he knows each and every one of us uh, so well, he knows just how to trip us up. So we need to have a strategy against that old rascal. And uh, uh, what do you think the first strategy should be? Prayer. Exactly right. And who can quote uh, 1 John 1, 9, 1 John 1, 9 to me? 1 John 1, 9. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, uh, uh, if, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, that you are never more strong in the Lord than when you are all confessed up yeah. and you are all cleansed from everything you've ever done wrong and you are living right for God. That's when you're at your strongest. Amen. You know, and you know that's when the devil's going to come at you. Right. It's just the way it works. But if you want to be strong against that devil, we confess our sins to God. And his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen. You know, uh, our blood pumps through our body, through our whole body. There is not a cell in our body that our blood isn't connected to. And our blood, what it does is it gathers up things. And it, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a real medical person here, so I'm just going to have to ad lib here a little bit. But I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Is our blood goes through our whole body, everywhere. And it purifies us. Uh, it takes it through our liver, which is kind of like a filter. It goes through our liver. It goes through our lungs, which uh, takes out impurities and puts in oxygen, you know, and it's constantly uh, feeding our body to the things that we need. So what happens when we get the blood of Jesus Christ in our body? If our body cleanses itself, what happens when we get Jesus' Amen. blood involved? And that's what we need to do. We need to claim his blood in our life. And when we mess up, just say it. Just say it. You know, uh, we all know the story of the thief, the thief, the three on the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ in the middle. And the one on the one hand says, if thou be Christ, come down and us too. The other says, uh, we receive due reward of our deeds. I'm ab living here because I didn't uh, memorize that. <laughs> but... Uh, the other one says, we've received a, a due reward of our deeds. And then he turns to Jesus and says, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus turns to him and says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. Amen. Glory to God for that. But here's, here's the whole, I said all that to say this. That third guy right there, he was that close to Christ. All he had to do was say, uh, me too. Me too, Lord. Me too. I want to go into your kingdom. But you know, what did he have to give up at that point? The man had nothing to give up. He's dying. He only's got a few more minutes. What kept him from doing that is pride. That's all it was. The only thing that kept him out of heaven was sinful pride. All he had to do was just turn to Jesus and say, me too. And that's what I'm saying. We need to get the pride out of our lives and just say, me too, Lord. Forgive me. Of everywhere I fail you, and that's when we can be our strongest. That's right, amen. You know, we, we need connections with our God. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are way many ways to get connections with God. And, of course, come to church every time the doors are open are very important. We need to be here every time. We're having some kind of function going on here. We need to be here. Uh, Wednesdays, Sunday night, Sunday morning, uh, are you? Brother Oscar's class, you know, if God's called you to these, we need to be there. Amen. These are connections with our Lord. Yep. 
And there are many ways we have connections, and one of the, th these are just some of the ways. Some of the most important ways, of course, you already know, is reading our Bible. And that's when God is speaking to our hearts is when we're reading his word. And that's a very important connection. And then another very, very important connection is uh, when we're praying. And we need to keep these connections strong, not just uh, sporadic. We need to plan them out because uh, the old devil, he knows, your, he knows your game and he knows how to pull you away. These are connections that we have with God, but there's even still more connections that we have with God. And let me ask you, what kind of music do you listen to? I'm, I'm telling you, when you're listening to gospel music, there's a connection with you and God. Amen. You ever been going down the road and a good gospel song comes on the radio and you just got to sing and just praise God? That's a connection. We need these connections in our lives. Every connection that we can get, we need to keep those connections strong. Because what happens when we have these strong connections with God? That old devil, man, he ain't got a prayer. He ain't got a chance and... He don't have a snowball's chance to, to, to hurt us when we're strong with God. When we're prayed up and we have all of our connections going strong with God, he can try, but he will not win. Amen. He will not win. But let me tell you, you let your guard down. You start, well, let's say, well, it ain't going to hurt nothing to listen to a little bit of radio that's not Christian for a little while, right? Let's just listen to a little bit. Next thing you know, uh, you're listening to that station all the time. And that's dragging you down. That's right. What's wrong with the little music? There's nothing wrong with the song you might sing. But there's no connection to God there. You know, and, and we need these connections with God. That's the only thing that will help us defeat that devil. You know, the Bible says to put on the whole armor of God. We need every single advantage we have against God. That's right. Amen. You know, if somebody was to ask you, or you, let's say you had to pick up, a, take a rattlesnake somewhere. Now, if you had the choice of what you're going to do with this rattlesnake, you could put it in a pillow sack, or maybe you could get it in a cage. Now, what are you going to take? Personally, I would take the pillow sack and a cage if I had to carry that rattlesnake. And that's called overcompensating. That's what we need to do to that devil. We need to overcompensate to, in order to feed him. Right. Not just barely squeaking by. And thinking you're going to finish strong because that old devil, he's good, man. He's been doing it a long time. He knows you, he knows you better than the preacher does. And he'll come after you. And we need to have our strong connections with God. Yes. Every single one of them. And uh, there's other connections that we get in life. And, you know, some of them might be uh, bad connections. I mean, like an Internet site you might end up on. You know, what's going to happen is maybe it's not bad one time, but the next time it is, and one time it is, the next time it isn't. That old devil sees that going on. Oh, yeah. And he'll prey on that, man. He'll use that. And, you know, if, if you have an excuse, well, I can't go to church today because um, my left toe is a little sore, so I'm going to stay. He'll make sure your left toe hurts every single time. That's right, that's right. You give him an excuse, and he'll run on that excuse, right. and he won't give it up. We need to keep our connections with God strong. Every single connection you can think of, we need to keep it our whole life. We don't give up. We don't back up until we're taken up. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, you know, a prudent man, in Proverbs uh, 22, 3, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. And when we see things that might harm us, we back away from it. This is the book of Proverbs uh, that says this. And uh, so what is your strategy in life? What are you going to use for strategy? Are you just going to keep going the way you're going and think things are all just work out? You know, I'll just keep going and it'll work out right. You know, we need to have a strategy against him. Yeah, that's right. You know, it says in the Bible, if, uh, uh, if you're going to war and you need a thousand men to conquer that city, we need to take two thousand. And that old devil, we need to take everything we got, every bag and a trick against him because he's way more powerful than what we give him credit for. Amen? Amen. And um, 1 John 1, 9, I'm going to read that again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and 
His word is not in us. I know I'm a sinner. I mess up all the time. But God is forgiven. He'll forgive me every time. And, you know, he is right there with us. Every step we go, he is right there, and he will forgive you. And uh, it, it tells us in uh, our you that we are to keep short accounts with God. Yes. Every time you mess up, if you mess up right then and ask God to forgive you, right then and there, you don't have to think about it. Remember it later on when you say, oh, I'll ask God to forgive me when I get back, get, get back home tonight. Do it right then and there. Amen. Do it right Amen. then and there. You know, keep short accounts with God. Amen. And uh, that's my message. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Let's see what the Lord has in store. Forgive me, this message finally got put on my heart this afternoon. And my daughter was right there helping me put it all together. Amen. 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 So, spending time with the Lord, he put something on my heart. I hope you enjoy it. Turn your Bibles to Genesis 33. Genesis 33 and chapter 13. Praise the Lord for the extra 10 minutes. Amen. Genesis 33 and 13. Once you keep that, don't bother trying to keep up with me with the rest. Just trust me or write it down and check me later. Genesis 33. Verse 13, and the Bible reads, And he said unto him, who speaking here is Jacob to Esau. Jacob is now returning to his brother after swindling his way, having the birthright, and tricking uh, his father Isaac in order to give him the birthright. Esau wanted to kill him, so he disappeared for some time. He's been gone. Now he's coming back. He's coming back. He came back with a whole bunch of livestock and, and food and all kinds of things to gift his brother Esau with to hopefully gain his love and trust and respect back and, and not be killed by his brother. After he did that, Esau thankfully welcomed his brother back, fell on his neck, hugged him, loved on him. And after he told that, Esau says to Jacob, let us take our journey and let us go and I will go with thee. And I will go before thee, rather said. Now, Jacob has been traveling for some time now. Listen to what he says. And he said unto him, this is Jacob unto Esau, My Lord, knoweth that the children are tender, and the flocks and the herds with young are with me. And if men should overdrive them, one day all the flock will die. Let's pray. God, my Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to preach your word to a congregation that's open and willing to accept it. Father, I pray that you cleanse me of any sin in my life that is bothering you, Father, and the hindrance to your word right now. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me in the blood and let your word speak boldly. Let it be true. Let it ring in the ears and plant itself in the hearts of those who need to hear it. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 So, as men called to preach, the word of God and spending all of our time in the Word of God and reading books that are on the Word of God, having our minds focused on theological matters and spiritual matters, many times in the eyes of the congregation, we seem weird. We don't seem like regular people. So I hope in this message, it seems like a little bit more within your reach. I hope in this message, the Lord guided me to make a basic message for everyone to hear. Turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I know I said don't try to keep up, but you may want this one. 2 Timothy chapter 4. When you get to 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading verses 1 and 2. That's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul says here in his uh, epistle, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Well, what's he charging Tim with, with? Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. So what is this reprove? To reprove is to convince someone of something they're doing wrong. So, let's follow that example. Over at Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, 
Again, this one, go, have fun. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. The Bible reads, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So with that, what's the first commandment that the Lord just told you? What did he tell you? Learn of me. Okay? So if to reprove is to convince someone that they're doing wrong, I found it easier instead of pointing my finger because we all do something wrong, how about I just mention the things we ought to be doing? And if you're not doing it, guess what that means? You're wrong. <laughs> right? So it's my uh, passive way of showing you the things life, that in your life that are wrong. But instead of me showing you, I'll let the Holy Spirit call it out in your heart. I'll just tell you what he wants you to do, and then you sit and think about those things that you are doing. So over in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, it says to learn of him. Are you learning of him? What are you spending your time in if it's not him? Because if Jesus isn't occupying your time, I can promise you this, something else is. So that's one thing he told you, to learn of him. Now Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20, the Bible reads, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. What's the second thing that the Lord just told you to go do? Go and what? Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, right? Go to all the nations. How are you doing in your witnessing? Okay, so that's two things that you got called to do. Now, over in 1 John chapter 1, which uh, our, our brother just covered over there, 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 and verse 9. Verse 7 reads, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Isn't that wonderful to know? That if you are born again and you're walking in the light, what does that mean, walking in the light? If everyone was watching you, are you doing okay? Or are you doing some secret things? Are there things happening that if one of us saw you, would we be able to look at you and say, oh yeah, that person's born again? Or would we have doubts? Not that our opinions matter whatsoever, but you get what I'm saying. Okay? So, how is it? How is that life? How's your walk? And then in verse 9... As we just heard again, we'll say it. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me help you, church family. Every time there's an altar call and you decide to stay in your seat, and I'm not talking about you not unable to physically get up. I'm talking about you. When you stay in your seat and you choose not to come up and get things right with the Lord, let me tell you what you look like to the Lord. You are a babe in Christ, are you not? You are. If you're just born again and you're not really reading the word, you're just kind of like in it, out of it, you're a babe in Christ. I know older people, we don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. Amen. You're a babe in Christ. You need milk to nourish you, to strengthen you, and get you up to that meat doctrine and things to make you strong so you can fight for the Lord and witness for the Lord and do for the Lord. Amen. Right? But instead, you choose to be a baby in your diaper that's loaded with your sin and then you've sat there so long that now you've decided to grab that sin and you're playing with it. And it's so good. And it feels so good. And it's so much fun. Come on. You never had kids play with their poop? You never, am I the only one whose kids did that? I guess my kids are the only one. They painted the wall with it before. So here they are, covered. Here you are. You're playing with it. You're painting in it. And the Lord's sitting there saying, Ugh, oh, son, boy, if you would just come to me so I could clean you, maybe I can bless you. So there you sit in your misery, all mad. Oh, he must know something about my life. That pre he's preaching against me. No, I'm not. You're just a filthy, soot-covered diaper baby that refuses to come to the Father to get clean. And that's all you need to do is get up. I know it's a lot. You get up. And you come down to the altar. Oscar, but everybody sees me. Yeah, they do. They do. Because when the Lord Jesus Christ is standing up for you in heaven, you know what? who sees you? All the angels that have lived holy for God knows how long. And then here comes the filthy diver baby. And the Lord says, God, not this one. This one's mine. 
And the angels witnessed that. So our Heavenly Father can do that for you, but you can't get up out of your pew seat and ask him to clean you up so he can bless you? Do you want blessings? I sure hope so. And if you don't, let me know. I'll take them. Lord, don't worry about blessing them. Bless me. Bless me. I'll take them if you don't want them. I don't care what that sounds like. I'll take it. We need all the blessings we can get. Let's get ourselves cleaned up. Get right with the Lord. Let's be mature Christians, okay? We've been sucking our thumbs, sucking on bottles, riding in our little crib seats long enough. It's time to stand up. It's time to walk forward. Yes, are they seeing you? Yes, they're watching a mature Christian, knowing that they're filthy, boldly walk up to the Father and say, Lord, clean me. And he says, absolutely, because I love you, and I am faithful and just to cleanse you of all your sin. All the sin? All the sin. Cleanse it. Now, my son, preach my word. Now, my son, go witness to the world. Give the word. Don't you want to serve your God? Amen. Amen. Everybody, I know you want to serve your God. Point two, rebuke. This really determines whether you're mature or not. What is rebuke? Rebuke is to scold sharply or to reprimand. Over in Matthew 23, we've got a little example of a rebuke. Matthew chapter 23. And at Matthew chapter 23, we're going to look at verses 25 through 28. And the Bible reads, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Who's speaking? Who's speaking? Let's brag on our husband for a little bit, right? Here we go. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first thou that which is within the cup and platter, that outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto the whited sepulchres, white, uh, excuse me, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all the uncleanness. Even so ye are outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. I don't care if you're here every Sunday. I don't care if you're here every Wednesday. I don't care if you give double what people give. I don't care what you're doing. If you're not coming to the Lord and getting right, if you're not doing what's supposed to be done, getting that diaper clean, making sure the inside is clean so you can shine out, Amen. you're a hypocrite. Amen. Hypocrite. I'm a hypocrite too. Yes, there are times where I go and I see people and the Lord says, get on track. God, I just want to pump my gas and go home. I'm tired. Give them a track. Uh, just uh, Okay, I'll, I'll stick it here. I'll, I'll put it in the gas thing. Here you go. There, look, it's in the handle, Lord. Is that good? <laughs> no. Go home, hypocrite. That's okay. It's all of us. It's all of us. Over in James chapter 2, what does he say? Ooh, I hope you're not lost, because if you're lost, you ain't going to like this. James chapter 2, verses 19. Thou believest that there is one God. You ever talk to a lost person? Hey, are you, are you born again? Uh, ask, I, I believe there's a God. I believe. I know. I believe. I get it. I just, I'm not into it like you. Give him this. James chapter 2, verse 19. Give him this. Thou believest that there's one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You can go ahead and say, oh, no, I know there's a God. I believe there's one God. I get, no, I believe, Oscar. I, do, I, just, I don't like the church thing. Well, all the devils believe, and I don't see them rejoicing in heaven. They're trembling. Your belief is not good enough. That's not enough. And if someone has sold you that and you stop right there, shame on you. You wait until they outwardly reject you. Be brave, okay? Men. You never went for the hot chick and got rejected, and you kept going until you got yourself. I, I see a lot of pretty women with ugly men. I know you know about rejection, okay? Get the hot chick. How do you get her? You keep asking until she says yes. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Win that soul. Win it. Until they look at you and say, Jesse, I don't want to hear Jesus anymore. Okay. It's on you. But if they're not outwardly rejecting you, why are you stopping? Did the person who led you to this church, did they stop? What if they did? Where would you be? 
Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 10 reads, For we are this workmanship. Oh, excuse me. For we are his workmanship. Whose workmanship are we? For God's workmanship, right? Created in Christ Jesus unto, uh-oh, good works. Oh, no, no, no. Faith cometh by hearing. Hear by the word of God. Faith alone. It's a gift. I, I, no, Oscar, no. I don't want to hear works. Well, if you didn't know, in Ephesians chapter 2, this is the Apostle Paul who is a born-again Christian. Speaking to born-again Christians. Telling them that for we are his workmanship, our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Why are you here? Why are you alive? Why are you breathing? You're born again, right? You're made perfect. God should just kill you and send you to heaven right now. He should. If you're doing nothing, but you're here, you're alive. So obviously God has something for you. It's up to you to figure it out. Oh, God, oh my gosh, is he reading my mind? No, I'm reading the Bible. All our millennials, what do they say? I just want to make a difference in the world. Those kids are screaming for Jesus Christ and don't even know it. How many of you are making the attempt? Or are we too busy smashing the millennials down, reminding them of all the shortfalls that we gave them? Who bought them those video game systems? Who? They did? No, you did. Who let them watch all the TV? Huh? Them? No, you. You're the adult. So now, what? We just leave it to them to fix it? Right? You created that monster. Now, you tame it. How do you tame it? Little by little. Every day. With the word of God. And you don't tame them. You let the Lord Jesus Christ tame them. Now moving on. Now we're off rebuke. Okay? We don't have to rebuke anymore. Now let's talk about exhortation. Exhort. To stir up. To encourage. To embolden. How am I going to stir this crowd up, Pastor? I don't know. Let's go to John 3.16. Let's go to John 3.16. How about that? How about that? John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever, are you a whosoever? I'm a whosoever. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Okay, here you go, lost people. This is for you. You ready? I believe in God. I believe I'm good. Are you? Uh-oh. He that believeth on him is not condemned. On him. Big difference from in him, is it not? When you're trusting on the Lord, when I'm trusting on this podium to keep me from falling, see that? I can't make a move or a step without making sure this thing is good. But if I'm trusting in the podium, that it's a podium, how much reliance do I have on it? Okay? He that believeth on on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is what? Condemned already? No. We hate the, the sin and not the sinner. Okay. Well, maybe you can foo-foo yourself through that. But God says, I hate Esau. I hate those sinners. I send my son to die. And what do they do? Reject. And then we're all God's children. He loves you. That's not what the book says. The book says that they're condemned already. Your feet feeling a little hot? Huh? You feeling a little nervous about your situation? Huh? Time to check up. Time to get mature. Time to really consider this. But let's exhort. Romans 3.23. I know what you're saying. Oh, but Lord, I mean... Come on, Oscar, I just, I can't. This is not true. I mean, you guys, you have all day. You're all perfect. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, friend, I know exactly what you're going through. Yes, I've had my fair share of pain. Yes, I've had my fair share of embarrassment. And I have two choices. Live in that embarrassment and wallow in it and just keep being miserable, licking my wounds, hoping for somebody to pick me up. Or I could be like Joshua when the Lord looked at him and said, get thee up, gird up your loins, be a man. And I stood up and I said, Lord, I'm broken. 
I've done this my whole life. I'm terrible. Now I need you. I need you to pick me up. And then you feel what power is. And then next we're going to go to Romans 10.9. Romans 10.9. Where are you going with this, Oscar? That's okay, lost sinner. We all sinned. Do you see that? So that Pharisee sitting next to you, trust me, they're just as worse. My Lord Jesus Christ called that Pharisee a sepulcher. Beautiful on the outside, but dead on the inside. You're okay. You're no different. Don't let them think that you are different. But they got something you don't. It's called the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called joy. You don't know what that is. Why? Because you haven't done this yet. Verse 9, Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Woo! Do you want to be saved or do you want to burn? It's a very simple question. Oh, well, I just, I just don't like this religion thing. Hey, did you hear them mention Baptist? Did you hear Catholic? Did you hear Protestant? Did you hear anything? He who hath the Son hath life. He who hath not the Son is condemned already. Romans 8.30. Romans 8.30. This is good stuff right here. Romans 8.30. And the Bible reads, once I get there, Moreover, whom he did predestinate them who also were called, and whom he called, them he also justified. Are you saved? You're justified. And whom he justified, them also he glorified. Are you saved? You have the hope of glory in you. Amen. Amen. He, excuse me, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Christians, live in victory. You have it. Oh, but Oscar, I sin. I messed up. Get on your knees. Give it to God, for he careth for you. That's not up there for decoration. That's instruction. So you can take up yourself and march on for the Lord Jesus Christ as a good soldier in Christ and start fighting for that word the way you want to, but you can't, but you can, because I can do all things through Christ Amen. that strengtheneth me. And last thing, we're going to go 38 and 39. What does it say here? Ready? Get excited, Christians. Who's born again? Let me see. Who's born again? Amen. You ready? Verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor other way, or nor creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You are saved, not by what you do, not by what you've done, but by his promise. Amen. Absolutely, Christians, we need to live a life. And then, if I haven't sold you on it, if you still don't believe me, go to Revelation. Go to Revelation. This is the one you want to turn to. Revelation 22. It's all the way in the back. All the way in the back. Revelation 22. As a matter of fact, the last page that there's writing on. Revelation 22, verse 20. Are you ready? You ready? If you're lost and you don't have the Lord, I got time. I'll get there eventually, Oscar. You know, I'll make my way. Just now is not a good time. Verse 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? He's coming. And if you're ready, is your spouse ready? Are your children ready? Is your co-worker ready? Is your neighbor ready? What happened? Wait, hold on. Where's the amens? Come on. You're born again, right? Go. Preach the word, right? Witness, right? You guys should be so busy during the week. No one should get a hold of you. There's too many souls that need the Lord Jesus Christ. Too many people are lost and need to be saved. And they need to hear from you, Christian. They need to see what you have. And when you're walking around with, oh, I'm so defeated. They don't want what you got. You got cooties, man. They don't want it. But when you're walking around and they see you go through that bad thing and then you just chuck it off with a smile, you silently move your lips and they don't know what you're doing and then suddenly you walk away like it's all good. Hey, man, buddy, what's different about you? What was that? Right, you just came from the hospital, man. Your heart valve is broke, but you're so happy. What is amen. it? What is it? Amen. I want, can you tell me what, I mean, I'm so miserable. 
I got Jesus, baby. I got Jesus. I got the blood. And that's what you want to give them. Friends, don't let it go. Give them the blood. how I'm going to preach behind that. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Oscar. Amen. All right, if you will, turn to your Bibles to Joshua chapter 6. We'll be there just briefly. All right. We'll start out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray to God that you just be with us here tonight and have the hearts and minds open to be receptive to the word that is preached here tonight. I pray to God that you would just preach the word the way you want it preached, Lord, not the way we want it preached. Get us out of the way, Lord, so you can do a really mighty work here tonight. I thank you, dear God, for all the people that are here. I thank you for letting us be here. Thank you for our salvation and what you did on Calvary. I love you for it. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, here in Joshua chapter 6, in verse 2, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And for time's sake, let's drop to uh, verse 5. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now this is, uh, the Lord gave Joshua the city of Jericho. We need to get that straight, that the Lord was in it, and that's why he done it. Now, what, what, uh, what I want to say now is, in Hebrews chapter 11, if we'll turn there. All right. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30. It says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about for seven days. Now, the message tonight is walls. You know, how many times in our life do we, uh, we build these walls around us? You know, we, we sometimes we build a wall around us that we ain't going to let God in. We're not going to let the people of God do anything for us. We're going to sit there in our pew and we're going to say, yeah, do what you can, I'm just here. You know, a lot of times you don't understand that you're being drawn here for a reason. You're being drawn here because God wants you in the family. Sometimes we don't want to give him our heart and our, our life. We don't want to do service for him. We don't want to surrender to him. So we have a wall built around us. You know, there's walls that we build around us each and every day that... Only God's going to be able to break those walls that we've built. You know, sometimes we, uh, we, we'll build a wall that, uh, of destruction. You know, sometimes around us, everybody around us, we're, we're being destructive, not constructive. You know, sometimes they go, well, he goes to church every Sunday. Well, how do they know you're a Christian if you're not living that kind of life? If you're not living a life of God, how do they know you're a Christian? Just because you come through them doors doesn't mean you're born again. Doesn't mean you're doing anything for God. God can't see it in you. If you went to a court of law and you stood up there, is there enough evidence to claim that you're a Christian? Are you guilty of being a Christian? You know, a lot of times we build a wall that people can't see through. You know, a, a wall of destruction would be backbiting. You know, there's, there's backbiting goes on in church every day. Now, you're not going to stand up here in the middle of everyone and go, yeah, yeah, you done this, Oscar. You done that. You done this. You're not going to do that. You're going to do it behind the scenes. You get behind that wall and you start blah, 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 blah. Well, I got news for you. God don't like that. He don't like Amen. it. He never has liked it. He doesn't like anything to do with discord among the brethren. I mean, you can get behind that wall and you think you can hide it from everyone in here, but you ain't hiding it from God Almighty. Jesus knows what you're doing all day, every day. He's omnipresent. No matter what, you can't hide it. You can't get behind that wall and hide it from Him. Amen. Now, you can build a wall that you can get behind and hide it from your friends. You might hide it from your pastor. But a lot of times, He knows. God <laughs> reveals it to Him through the Spirit. 
You understand? Because he, he needs to feed the flock. He needs to be the shepherd of the flock. He knows things that go on. I know he knew things that went on in my life when I was not walking the way I was walking. I was building a wall. He would come into my house. I'd put that wall up. He had a terrible time getting me to ever come back to church. You know, I, I built that wall. And I know there's people sitting in here that build walls. And those walls can be easily broke down through Jesus Christ. Amen. If we would just use that. A lot of times we don't want to use that. Um, discouraging. Uh, how many times do you say something that's encouraging or discouraging to someone? You know, you need to think before you speak. Ask God to reveal something to you that you can say something to somebody that would be encouraging words, not discouraging. You know, I've had people say things to me, and, and it be my friends in, in LaBelle, it may be some family member, it may be anyone that may say, you know, you're, a, you're changed, you're different. I, I don't like the way you've changed. And it's because they live in the world and I live in the light. I'm not in the darkness of this world anymore. So I'm going to be different. And I understand that. That's why I don't have the same friends I had at one time in my life that I have now my family and friends here in this church. I don't have friends out there. There's none out there that want to be my friend because they don't want to hear what I got to give them. If they would come to church, they could hear it from other people. They wouldn't have to hear it from me because they knew what I was. But they also know where I'm at and what I am now. They've heard that. And that's a wall that we need to break. We need to break those walls in our life, and we need to do it through faith. You know, in Proverbs chapter 26, if we want to turn there. I, I love Proverbs because uh, I read it for a long time, a chapter a day. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of meat in that chapter. In chapter 26, verses 20, it says, Where no wood is... There the fire goeth out. So where there is no talebearer, the strife ceaseth. Verse 21, As coals are the burning coals and wood to the fire, so is a contentious man to the kindled strife. Verse 22, The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Now you know that's damaging. That's discouraging. Tear that wall down and get with Jesus Christ. Uh, he, can, he can help you through everything. You know, we, we have, when we lived in darkness, we had a wall of darkness around us. There was no light. And the, and the wall of darkness that we built, the light couldn't get in, could it? Because we liked wallowing in it. We liked living in the world. We had a desire to be in the world in those days. But when, when Jesus comes and breaks that down, and he, he gives us that through salvation of Jesus Christ and the shed blood of Calvary. We can break that wall. We just need to act upon it. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He don't say just because he loved you or me. He said he loved the world. He loved everyone. He, likes, he loves that sinner out there. He loves them. He, he expects them to get saved before it's too late, before he sends Jesus back. To get us. He wants everyone to get saved. He doesn't want that anyone go to hell. But hell hath enlarged itself. Because people don't want it. They don't want to hear what the gospel is. And there's a lot of times we get out here and we preach. Or we talk to people. We pass out tracts. How many times have you had a person when you go to hand them a tract go. Whoa, whoa, don't hand me that. It's like you're trying to hand them a rattlesnake. Come on, it's the word of God. What, what is wrong with the word of God? Well, these days, the devil has blinded the people in this community. He's, he's blinded the people in the world. He's got them in darkness. They don't see the light that we see. That's right. they, they won't see it until they're drawn to him. Amen. Will they accept him? We don't know for sure, but we can tell them. We can give them that glimpse of light through us. If we live that type of life. We've got to give them that light. They ain't never going to see it no other time. Amen. Live as a good report. That good report is your testimony. Yeah. Are you living the right way? Are you doing things all week that's not pleasing to God and then expecting to win some soul to Christ? God forbid. 
That's not what he wants. Break that wall. The wall of sin. How many times do we waller and live in sin? And we build that wall up around us that no one can penetrate because, hey, we're all right. Hey, I'm a good person. Hey, I'm, I'm good. I'll pass out a track once a year. I'll do something every now and then for the church. I'll go over there and mow the grass or something. That's not, that's not good. That's not where we need to be. Sin is sin, and I don't care if it's a little sin or a big sin. Sin is sin in God's eyes. Amen. And there ain't, no, there ain't no levels to it. Sin is sin. Yes. And we need to understand that, just like Brother Oscar was saying, just like Brother Rod was saying, we need to get cleansed of that sin. We need to come to the throne of grace and ask God to cleanse us. Yes. Yes. Cleanse us of unrighteousness and iniquity in our life. Yeah. You're not going to get cleansed sitting in that pew back there going, I'm all right. I'm all right. Sound like a broken record. I'm all right. I mean, come on, get with it. Get up off your dead carcass. You're dead in trespasses and sin. Yes, sir. You got to get up off that and come to Jesus Christ to get cleansed. You got to come and ask Him. He's waiting with open arms. He's waiting. But you build that wall of sin, not doing what God wants. He, he wants us to do something for Him, but we're not going to do it while we're living in sin. We're not going to do nothing for Him. We're going to be the opposite of what he wants. That's a shame. God forbid. You know, there. do you know how many lost souls are out there in the community today? Look right now in church right here. There's probably 50 or 60, maybe 70 people. How many's out there? Millions. How many out of them millions out there even know what Jesus Christ is all about? None. So it takes this little drop in a bucket of us to do what we can to tear down that wall and to get out there and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's all it takes is us to do it. Now we can sit in here and say, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. But if you never get up off your carcass and go do it, what have you done? It's better to do something than to not. It's better to do it instead of vow it. You may vow to God, that, yeah, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. If you never do it, what good is it? It's not any good at all. That's right, man. You got to do it. You got to get up and do it. You know, we all have walls that we build that hinder our walk with Jesus. How many times do we build up a wall because we don't want nobody to get in? You know, it's a shame. You know, we got our president out there. He's building a wall on our on our south. Why is he building that wall? To protect our country. He's not doing it for no reason. He's doing it to protect. That's right. Now that's the kind of wall I think we should be building. We should be building a wall of protection. Amen. You know, we, we must, you know, he must increase and I must decrease in order for me to do anything for him. Right. I can't be I. I can't have I in my vocabulary anymore. It's got to be him through me is the only way I can do anything for him. Amen. It's all him. It's nothing to do with me. It's him. And, and I need to, we need to build some walls in our life that are more pleasing to him. Yeah. You know, I want to tell you, how about a wall of faith and trust? Yeah. How about it? How about it? You know, in Jesus Christ, salvation through him, that's faith and trust. You can find that in Hebrews 11, the whole chapter's on faith. You can go to Proverbs 3, 5. It's on trust. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. You know, there's times that we'll sit there and we'll go, well, I should probably give him a track. And then we go, nah, I don't think I will because I, I don't want to get tied up with him for an hour here at the gas station because I'm giving him the word of God. Well, let me tell you something. What other time do you have? That's good. What other time do you have? You know, what, what kind of time can you give God? Just Sunday and morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night? Do you realize that most people spend two hours Sunday morning, one hour Sunday night, one hour Wednesday night? There's 24 hours in each day. There's seven days. You spend four hours doing something for God? What would be wrong with spending another hour a day or two hours a day? 
you got to build a wall of faith and trust in him. You can't do it on your own. You can't. You can tell yourself, no, I can't do it. I ain't going to do it. I, I, there's no way I can do it. Yeah, I understand that because I've said it myself. I've said it myself. But I want to make a change. I want to make a change in my life. I want to build a wall. How about a wall of prayer? How about a wall of prayer? How many of us don't need a wall of prayer around us? How many? Because if you don't need prayer in your life, I want to hang out with you. Because I need it. But I want to hang out with somebody that may not need it. Evidently, they've already arrived, and I want to be there. They're already an angel. They're walking down here as an angel. I, I need to be with them so that I can learn how to get that. But my prayer life isn't so wonderful at times. But in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says the, the fervent, effectual prayer availeth much. Yes. Now, if we're, not, if we're not praying, what are we doing with that time that we should be spending with God? Amen. What are we doing with that time? Are we watching TV? Because i got something to tell you about TV. Mine needs to go outside, and I need to shoot it about four or five times and leave it out there because it ain't no good for me at all. Because there's times that I go home, and I sit down in my recliner, and I get me a glass of tea, and I, I turn it on, and I watch gun smoke or something like that, you know, because I'm an old country boy. I like gun smoke. But that's not doing me any good for God. It's not doing me any good to watch Andy Griffin not doing me any good I need to be in my Bible yes, that God has given me my instruction manual for a reason yep. I need to use it for that I, you're not going to have a prayer life if you don't have a Bible reading life because you're not going to get convicted you're not going to be able to speak to God if he can't speak back when we pray to him, we're talking to him. But when we read this Bible, he's talking to us. And that's more important than it is to pray to him without reading your Bible. You should read your Bible and then pray to him and let him guide you into what you read. To tell you what you read. To help you with that. A wall of protection, like I said. We need to build a hedge of protection around us through Jesus Christ. We need to ask him to protect us. You know that old... Them old fiery darts of Satan, they're going to keep coming no matter what till the day we go home to be with Jesus Christ. There's no day that you're going to say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. He's not going to be after me anymore. No, he's going to flee from me when I ask that Jesus Christ take him out of there, but he's still going to come back and try it again. Did he leave Job alone? No, and God gave Job to him to mess with because he knew Job was a faithful man of God. I want to be that kind of man. I want to be able to withstand the wiles of Satan. I want to be able to handle it. You know, it, I can't do it without Jesus. I can't do it on my own. There's no I in team. Team is team and I is I. And I, there's no I in team. You can't have a team just basing your figure on I. I, I, I. No, can't do it. You got to have we. We as in team, that's you and Jesus Christ. That's what it takes. More him than you. It takes him. How about a wall of grace? Did y'all not receive grace when you received salvation? Amen. Huh? You know, grace and mercy? My goodness. You know, in Psalms 84, 11, you can turn there. I know for time's sake, the Lord will give grace and glory. In Ephesians 2.8, for by grace ye are saved. Now, if you're not receiving grace, I'd examine my salvation. You know, you've got to build that wall of grace through Jesus Christ. He gave it to you. How about a wall of kindness? Are we supposed to love one another or are we supposed to bite bat them down? You know, if I'm, if I'm back biting them down, I'm not doing any good for, for the brethren of the church. I'm quenching the Holy Spirit for the whole church when I do something like that. That's no good. We're all supposed to be one accord. We're all supposed to love one another as a whole. We're the bride of Christ. We're one with Christ. 
we're all members of that body. Okay? If we're not, and we backbite half and half, what are we? We're, we're never, ever going to be able to make it. If we're not a whole unit, we're never going to have revival. We're never going to have God's blessing on this church because we're hindering the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't hinder the Holy Spirit by not loving each other the way you should. Amen. We're supposed to love them the way Christ loves us. Yes. We're supposed to forgive them. Right. If we don't forgive them, which is my next one, is a wall of forgiveness. Why don't we build a wall of forgiveness? You know, if we're not forgiving them, is Christ forgiving us? No, it says in the Bible it's not. Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive men, your heavenly Father will forgive you. If, if you believe everything in this book, you'll believe what I'm trying to tell you here tonight. you you got to build a wall that is pleasing to God. Tear down those walls that aren't. Just like when Joshua marched around Jericho. God gave him that. Those walls fell down flat. They didn't just a piece or two of them fall down. They fell down flat. How about, how about in Proverbs about the vineyard? When he walked by the vineyard, the wall was breaking down and tearing apart and the nettles and the thorns was taking over the vineyard and all that. Was, was they protecting the wall they had built to protect the vineyard that they owned? How about our vineyard? How about our walls? When we build that wall, are we supposed to protect it and to keep it up and to paint it and keep it and fertilize the vineyard and bring in fruit? Not wild grapes, fruit. We're supposed to be fruitful, much fruit. He wants us to bring in much fruit. That's soul winning. If we're not doing that, it's because we're just sitting back and relaxed and content with our salvation. Well, I'm going to, make, I'm going to heaven. I'm good. I'm fine. How about the person that got you here? If they would have felt the same way, where would you be today? If the person that witnessed to you and got you to, to come to church and then for you to give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ, if they gave up the way you're giving up, where would you be? Where did you come from? I come out of the muck and the mire. That's where I come from. I come from way down in there. He had to reach way down to get a hold of me. Some people may not have came from that. They may have came from being a Christian all their life and living in church all their life and going to church all the time and, and doing things for God, and now they've just gave, they've given it up. But I've got news for you. I came from where it was bad, where I came from. I know where I came from. I don't ever want to go back there. I'm, I'm as far ahead in Jesus Christ than I've ever been. And it's all because of Him. It's all because of what He wanted for me. Not for what I wanted. He wanted it. You got a wall of love. You got to love one another with a pure and fervent heart. I'm, and 1 Peter 1.22 tells you that. You know, keeping Jesus Christ in front always, reading His Word, praying, Witnessing, having a good report can break all the walls down that hinder us and build the walls for the protection of his people. Amen. Just remember, build those walls that are pleasing to him, not the ones that hinder. Don't be a stumbling block for someone. Right. Amen. Amen. That's some good preaching. Let me ask you a question. How many of y'all are trusting in the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 25 says, But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Woo. I got it. There's a reason for everything. Praise the Lord. Man. Let's all stand on our feet and we'll have a word of invitation. The Lord spoken to you here tonight. I don't know what your spiritual condition is.